reminded me that in, in the uh, some of the publicity about the show, uh, it was said that I painted on top of other people's paintings. Well, that that's an example there. That was. Um, a painting originally by an old lady that lived in, in our village and she, when she died a lot of her stuff was um, given to me. It was a very very kind of dull brown painting of a, of a tree and I quite liked the composition and as you can see I've now added my oval to it and kind of work, worked into it um, trying to maintain something of the of the atmosphere of the, of the colour that she used. I, didn't, I mean, I could, obviously I could have painted in bright colours, but that would have seemed, in a way, almost disrespectful of the painting that was, that was originally there. I want, wanted to, to do something to it that, uh, yeah, had a relationship with it. Um, another painting with a story is this, this one, which is called um, Incident in a Car Park. And this refers back, again, I'm not quite sure what year it was, but um, it was one year where we had a massive flood in, in Winscombe. And um, the road opposite um, to the um, community centre was basically became a river. Water was gushing down this, this road into the uh, community centre car park and our building, the art shed, is at the bottom of the car park. Fortunately, it's on stilts, and there was a, just it was just in a lake, and the only way you could get into the building was um, you had to wade through um, through the water, and so this was a kind of memory, if you like, a memory stroke map of um, of that incident. Um, the this again. Um, the painting, I, this is one of a couple of paintings I did to do with the, the mouth of the axe. Um, uphill has always had a, a sort of special place in my heart. Um, when I was at school, it was where we used to uh, skive off uh, from games and uh, cross country and so on. So I've got, I've got a kind of a hint of um, green down. Uh, and uh, yeah, so it's really just. Uh, I think a kind of gentle um, riff on the on my history connected with um, with uphill. That's another one. Is, is that one based on drawings? I mean, do you make a series of drawings? Do you go there and actually sit and do mixed on drawings? I, well, I I have yeah. got lots of drawings oh, right. and yeah, paintings yeah. Of, of. In fact, so I probably painted more in the open in uphill than anywhere than anywhere oh, else. But I, I haven't got any, I don't think anyway, drawings that specifically um, give me that composition. That right. kind of happened as I, as I worked into it. And then the, that is a, also from the same kind of group, although the connection is much less, much less obvious. But um, um, Laura spotted. <coughs> Pretty early when we were going through the paintings to hang, that this these four you know, work together well as a as a group, and of course yeah. the, the the thing that links them is that they they all really have la landscape um, references. So I mean this one very very strongly in that it, it is our garden. Um, it, at, at one stage it was a, a a much more direct painting of our um, leaning apple tree in front of the house and then I subsequently worked into it and turned it into something else. Do you quite often start with figurative work and then abstract it? Yes, I yeah. do, yeah. Oh, I'm not and that's another one, um, also in our garden, um, again with the, with the leaning apple tree. I mean this painting to a large extent could be seen as being a painting of erasures so obviously there's a lot of white in it, and I think, well, do I need, do I need that? No, let's get rid, of, get rid of that, and so kind of confining it to fewer shapes. You went to an exhibition where you, the artist did that, and it might have inspired you. You, you were telling me, I can't remember who um, it was now. Well, I suppose there's a, I'm not sure that I can, 
artists. Was that female, female artists? Oh, uh, I know. Yeah. Yes. No, that's slightly different. Oh. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll come to that oh. in a minute. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Um, then, then the other thing, that, okay, these are sort of landscape, landscape-based, landscape interfered, interfered with, but I also do things with still life. So both these two, uh, and to a lesser extent, the third, are based on still life. This one, again, was a fairly direct still life, um, but then I dra you know, drastically changed it and um, worked into it. One of the things that I have been doing quite recently has been a new approach, if you like, to, to reworking a painting, is just simply to cover the whole thing in a very rich coat of a transparent colour. Mm. So those of, those of you who are painters will know, know what I'm talking about. Those of you that are not may not be aware that when you, when you buy paint um, some colours are opaque and some colours are transparent so that one I used uh, um, transparent olive green uh, which I, I painted over there's an, uh, some others which we'll see later I used um, thalocyanine blue which is another intense transparent colour and then another one the the dreaded um, alizarin crimson which um, uh, is also is transparent and very very rich and in fact there's alizarin crimson in this this one as well and it's only that bottom left it's hand really corner. rich isn't it beautiful yeah. is that an attempt with the transparency to draw out the contrast well no actually to do the opposite if you put a a, a color you know a transparent color over something it, it reduces the contrast it's um you know it'll um darken the lights um Although again, depending on what colour you've chosen, it may even darken the darks. Um, but we'll, That's what I was thinking. We'll, we'll, if you're darkening the darks, does the shape kind of like go back, or is it coming out at you? Um, um, well, again, it will depend on what co what colours you've got. But on the whole, what the eff overall effect will be to push everything back, right. and so then I can decide what I want to pull out in front of it. And. and What's nice about oil paint is that, is that it takes a long time to dry, so you can work sort of wet into wet and allow the, the quality of your original colour to affect what it is you're working into it. Do you ever find that you've gone sort of too far and you can't pull, can't pull it back? Sometimes, but it, yeah. if that happens, then I you know, pick up a palette knife, scrape it off yeah. and a cloth, and then you know, work yeah. back into it again. Yeah. The two at the end, David. Uh, Especially that one has got an amazing amount of depth in it. Is that tension? Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of your paintings are quite, yeah. I don't want to say flat, but you know what I mean? Two dimensional shapes, but that has got, it's not perspective as such, is it? But you know, you know the, the, the shapes are like figures, aren't they, almost? Yes. Or objects sort of dancing around in front. Yeah. Well, yes, I mean, I, I am interested in, in different ways of manipulating space. So, yes, mm. in, in that, that, that is. Always, and the, the other yeah. one at that end has got yes. quite a bit of. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, um, there, there are uh, others. I mean, some of, sometimes I mean, in that one you could say it's sort of quasi-atmospheric perspective. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, a painting like that one on the the, the left end wall um, is not a sort of conventional um, way of depicting space. It's much more to do with things being in layers. So that that's another kind of space. Mm. Right? So with that one. The original, that's been through about four stages. It was still life, and then I worked into it and I didn't really like it very much. And then I, another time I came along and then I added the oval into it. And again, I still wasn't terribly happy with it. And we had a, a, an exhibition at our center and I had the thing on an easel and I looked at my painting and I looked at these things on the wall I thought, Hmm, actually, the, the gaps between the paintings are quite interesting. So I then started painting the gaps oh. between mm -hmm. the paintings mm -hmm. onto that, and so that. I that, sometimes turn a painting yeah. upside down and it looks more interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yes, like, well, you can get halfway through it. Yeah. Just, so anyway, that that's kind of that one. Um, that one is obviously is still life based, but that one is different from the others in that that one was worked more or less as you see it. I had a still life in front of me, but I decided to, to simplify in an immediate sense as I was working straight from, from the group. So, yeah. Now, 
The, the story that uh, Laura was referring to about using white was, wasn't really to do with erasure, although I kind of partially use it in that, in that way. Mm -hmm. This painting here, and the right-hand one, I've been to see the um, Dorothea Tanning exhibition at the Tate a couple of times, and the thing that really impressed me about, or one of the things that impressed me about the work, was her use of white. Um, she did amazing things with it. I mean, some, sometimes it, it was just this fabulous kind of silk material, you know, as if you were looking at, at light shining across a sort of silk surface. But in, in other places, it, was, it had a much kind of harder quality to it. And also she seemed to be able to sort of do rather unexpected spatial things with it. And so that kind of fired me up, really, when I got back from the, the show. And that was one of the paintings where I thought that I would have a go at playing with, with, um, with white. I mean, it's, not, it's nothing really like her, her work, but that, that was the spark um, for it. Yeah. Well, that was another painting that I overpainted but I, I, I'm ashamed to say I have no recollection of what, of what was, <laughs> un, was underneath. Um, was it yours? No, it wasn't no. mine, no. <laughs> with, with that one, Dave, where there's a diptych there, you know, was that two individual paintings, or did you do two together? Or? <laughs> yeah, well, I was asked this great question earlier this mm. afternoon. Oh, sorry and about I, that. And I can't, well, I can't really quite remember. I, I did paint them separately from one another, but I guess I must have painted them more or less at the same time. Although when I look at the colours between them, they don't actually share many colours in common. I mean, even the, gr the greens are different. I suppose that and that are the same. Yeah. But the blue is different. Even the quality of the white is different. So whether I... Yeah, so I'm sorry to say I can't really remember the... But the dark so, elements bring it together, don't they? Is a kind of energy. Mm. Yeah. Thing. That's the thing. Yeah. Unifying mm. something. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, that's right. Yeah, so that's my fallen angel. Okay, well, we could go that's and have very a look. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. David, I was lucky enough to see you working on some of these. How do you know when you're finished? Because <laughs> I've seen you, <laughs> I seen you, you know, change, move. Uh, Somebody working on that one. How do you know the moment? That's enough. Well, it's a very difficult question to answer. I mean, it, I mean, it's, it's just, just well, I suppose when it seems right. right. I guess. Okay. Yeah. It's like cooking, then, yeah. Like cooking. Well, <laughs> I suppose you could it's say it's going to be that. precious with art, but after all, it's. Yeah, your taste, isn't it? At the end of the day. Yeah, in the process. Do you work on one piece at a time, or a few pieces at a time? Because that tends to influence how the other one. Um, I suppose, really, I do work on one piece at a, mm. at a time. You know, there may be paintings that I haven't entirely resolved, sort of hanging around here and there, mm. but. Um, I suppose my attention really is on the one that mm. I'm working on. I don't don't tend to go from one easel to another. Do you find it makes a difference whether the painting's framed or unframed? I mean, I know this is a bit of a bony contention with a lot of people, and Scottish artists tend to glaze every single painting that they do, even if right. it, apparently, even if it's the paint is this thick, they still put it behind glass. So, uh, no, well, I, I don't know whether that's, that's a, I don't know whether that's a, a Scottish mm. thing, but uh, right, who have said that. Well, I mean, a lot it's of these paintings. I think I would. <laughs> I would. But I mean, I, yes, I would frame these paintings. I mean, basically, they're they're so recent that I, you know, I haven't got around to doing it. You know, in fact, some of them, well, as Laura said, were still wet. When we were, you know. <laughs> okay. Well, we could have a 